Hi guys and welcome back to Surviving Chronically. I am happy that you guys have decided to come back. Today is something special to me and I am excited about this vlog. First let me say that please excuse that I may ramble and I, might, I'm, I may get lost a little bit. I have been running a fever and not feeling well for a couple days but I made a promise to myself to do this video. And a promise to my friend Sarah, whose story I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. I know there will be a glare on my glasses as well because I have to read her story from my laptop. And I cannot do so without my glasses. So please ignore. Um, first, let me explain what this vlog series is. I, I know you guys have probably heard me talk about it. But this is called Surviving Together. Where we highlight other people's chronic illness stories. And, and their diagnosis is and what they've been through so that we can show everyone that we are first not alone and that we fight this together. There are a lot of people out there who feel so alone and so isolated and so misunderstood that my hope is with this weekly series that we can highlight how many different chronic illnesses that there they are and how they affect so many different people differently. And that we can just get the word out there about these chronic illnesses that people do not understand because they are not spoken about enough. <clears throat> so, if you guys like that, please subscribe and click the bell, little bell, so you'll get notifications when I upload a video. I plan on trying to do these every Wednesday with a new person every week and highlighting a new illness every week. <clears throat> so, here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about my friend Sarah Kincaid. She is 29 years old, and her diagnosis is endometriosis ovarian cysts. <clears throat> I've known Sarah for uh, a good little while now, and uh, more recently her and I have started speaking about her chronic illness struggle because I have been so open about mine. People often feel comfortable talking to me about theirs, which I love. I, I love that I have grown to be able to help other people as well as myself and sometimes I can't help myself though I'm gonna be real it's been a rough day <laughs> it's been an emotional day and rough I hate being sick on top of my already sick it's like an extra helping us sick it's ridiculous however back to Sarah uh, Sarah I, I made a list of questions and Sarah did not necessarily feel comfortable sharing her story on camera so I told her that I would ask her the question she could email me a really good picture of herself that she likes and we could share her story this way someone being on camp not wanting to be on camera or not feeling comfortable being on camera is not a reason for their story to not be shared so I hope that you guys will understand that I'm gonna be reading the answers from Sarah's perspective once I start reading these questions okay here we go how old were you when you started experiencing your symptoms? Sarah says that she was 20 years old when she started getting the symptoms, but it did not know exactly what was going on at first. Number two, how long did it take you to get a diagnosis? I was blown off by medical professionals in my area, so I did not receive a solid diagnosis until about two years ago. So two years ago, she received her solid diagnosis of endometriosis. <clears throat> Three, can you explain your condition to us? This, it, this right here is a snippet from WebMD, and I'm going to include the link to this snippet in the description so that you guys can, can get a real feel for what endometriosis is from a medical standpoint. Excuse me, guys. Ooh. I can do this, right? Yes. Um, endometriosis is a common condition in women. It's chronic, painful, and often gets steadily worse. Normally, the tissue that lines a woman's uterus is known as the endometrio endometrium, and it is found only in the uterus. But when a woman develops endometriosis, microscopic bits of this tissue escapes from the uterus and grows on other organs such as the ovaries. The outer wall of the uterus, the space between the uterus and the bladder, in rare case, in, excuse me, and in rare cases, they can spread outside the abdomen and grow on other organs such as the lungs. 
Just like the endometrium, the escaped tissue responds to the hormones estrogen and progesterone by thickening, and it may bleed every month. But because the escaped tissue is growing on other tissue, the blood it makes cannot escape. This causes irritation to the surrounding tissue, which causes cysts, scars, and the fusing of body tissues. This can eventually bind the reproductive organs together and lead to infertility. Cases of endometriosis are classified as mild, moderate, or severe, depending on the size of the lesions and how deeply they reach into the other organs. They are also referred to as stage one through four. Endometriosis affects three to 10% of women of reproductive age and 20 to 50% of women of, infer of infertile age. <clears throat> it affects about 40 to 80% of women who are suffering from pelvic pain. Most women are diagnosed in their 20s and it affects all races equally. Symptoms usually get better after menopause, but in some cases do not. It depends on the situation and the severity of the endometriosis. <clears throat> Number four, how did you handle receiving your diagnosis? And from Sarah, she says, honestly, at first, when I, get, when I got diagnosed two years ago, I was relieved because someone took the time to believe me and test for it. <clears throat> she was diagnosed using a laparoscopic surgery, which is oftentimes, from what I've been researching to prepare for this, how they will look for it in cases where they cannot find it in another way is what I was getting from it. <clears throat> when it came back positive for endometriosis, it was no longer a missing game, but with some other female issues already, I was scared and overwhelmed. I can imagine you were scared and overwhelmed, Sarah. Sarah I really, really can. <clears throat> what is a good day like for you? She says, a good day is where the symptoms affect me mildly. There is not a day I do not experience some or all of the symptoms of endometriosis. What is a bad day like for you? A bad day for me, I have severe shooting pain down my left leg from my left ovary, which is where all my cysts are located. Lower back spasms, morning sickness like nausea, Occasionally, it will cause spikes in my blood pressure and temperature, bleeding through my pants even when I've changed my tampon 15 minutes ago. My periods are also irregular. I stay tired because endo gives me chronic daily pain. The amount of stress and sugar intake I have can make the pain much worse. <clears throat> Number six, do you have a support system? Sarah says, I do have a tiny support system because several of my family members have been diagnosed as well, just not with as severe cases as my own. But most other people just tell me to suck it up or ask why I'm crying over something as simple as my period, <clears throat> which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right here and say something. If you do not have a period, you have no right to, to say anything about it, one. Two, if you do not have endometriosis, you do not have anything to say about it because you do not understand. That was just my little snippet I needed to put in there because I, I have heard a lot of women struggle with this and they have people tell them to suck it up. Suck it up is such, I hate that. I hate that. Sorry guys, we had a little camera snafu there. We were on question number six and I had gotten on my little soapbox about people saying suck it up. So let's move on to question number seven. What are your treatments and medications like? <clears throat> My treatments consist of 1,200 milligrams of ibuprofen every eight hours, hot and cold packs, warm baths, and prescribed muscle relaxers for, <coughs> for my back spasms, excuse me. <clears throat> What's one misconception about your condition you'd like to set straight? What I'd like people to understand is just because we are female doesn't mean periods are always normal. Some women have PCOS, which I do. Me, Patricia, has PCOS. It, and I understand that is that frustration that Sarah's talking about there. 
some women have endo, ovarian issues, <clears throat> cervix issues, etc. We are all individuals and should be treated as such. And I'm going to say I couldn't agree more with you, Sarah. That is a very well stated statement. Chronic illness affects everybody in so many different ways. It is so misunderstood by people who do not have it that those of us who are in the chronic illness community, we should be really trying to support each other and learn more about each other's illnesses and help each other in any way that we possibly can. <clears throat> Number nine, have you received judgment for your condition? She says, I am judged because people think just because I'm younger, my body shouldn't feel a certain way or that I'm using it as an excuse to get extra breaks at work even though that time is spent in the bathroom. <coughs> Ooh, it's a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be, but I'm gonna get it done. <laughs> we are doing this, we are sharing Sarah's story because it is important and deserves to be shared. <coughs> and I want to add there what Sarah said about being judged because of her age happens a lot. I hear a lot of people say to me that doctors or nurses or family members or friends will say, you look entirely too young to be sick. And let me tell you guys, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard that, I would be super duper rich. I am not even playing. In the last 11 years, I've heard that so many times I'd be very rich. But it is a very kind of hurtful statement because we realize that we are young. We realize that you would expect people to to be older and have more complications, but that's not the way it works. A chronic illness does not have an age limit or a minimum age requirement <coughs> to to be diagnosed and for your life to be changed forever. <clears throat> Number 10, what is your future prognosis with this condition? <clears throat> I am going to have extensive surgery to have the endo removed from the other areas of my body. It has spread to things such as my small intestines. Yes, it will more than likely grow back, but it would be nice to have some relief in the meantime. The only other option is a hysterectomy and being placed on a pill that will throw me into early menopause, which I do not want to do yet because I want to still have the chance of having kids. I'm not ready to let go of that dream yet. That chokes me up a little bit because you shouldn't be ready to get rid of that dream, Sarah. And I hope that when you're watching this, you, you hear me say that, do not give up on that dream. I know that a lot of people have struggled with infertility with this situation actually someone very very close to me has has had issues with this and um i just want you to know that you're not alone and you're cared about and your story is it going to inspire somebody right now and i hope you know that <clears throat> number 11 what is one lie that you keep telling yourself because you are sick. And Sarah says, I keep telling myself one day I won't have to deal with this anymore. Oh, love. <laughs> I, I'm sure that anybody who has a chronic condition, especially those with endo, can relate to what you're saying right there. And even those who do not have endo, I do not have endo, but I can relate completely to what you're saying, that every day you wake up thinking, maybe I won't feel this way anymore, or what are they, maybe they'll come up with something that I'll never have to feel this way, but then it's kind of like a crushing reminder when you realize that there is no cure, that there is no cure, there is no stopping it, there's ways of putting it into remission or slowing it down, but chronic conditions oftentimes cannot be cured in any way. <clears throat> what is the worst thing a doctor or medical professional has ever said to you? This is number 12. Something a doctor has said to me was, really, your pain is that bad? I highly doubt that. Do you have a drug problem that you need to get pain meds for or something because you saying you're in this much pain isn't going to work? Wow, that <laughs> that infuriates me, actually, and makes me very angry because I have, I have myself heard the, that type of judgment that if you are in a severe amount of pain, 
that they the physician does not understand themselves that they seem to think that you are making it up to get drugs which to me is preposterous because I am not gonna go to the emergency room and pay three grand for for one visit so that I can get drugs like it doesn't work that way for me so that's kind of a very very misunderstood situation and, and to me it's because of the opioid epidemic I'm not going to get into that but it is a very misunderstood situation and the chronic pain community is suffering people like Sarah is suffering not having the relief that she deserves because there has been so much flack on treatment with opioids when the opioids should be meant for the people who cannot be cured where there is not another option to stop the pain when you're waiting for a procedure or whatever needs to happen it is not okay to stay in pain like that every day and it's not okay for doctors to talk to us that way I'm so sorry that you were spoken to in that way Sarah that completes our video of Sarah's endometriosis story I hope that you guys, especially those of you who also struggle with endo, will hop in the comments and show Sarah some support. I also hope that this will help those of you know that you are not alone. You are not alone in your chronic illness. We are out there and we understand. Again, thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your story. I hope that you guys will follow me, follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. The links are in the uh, description. There's also some links in the description to follow Sarah on Instagram and on her social media so you guys can go follow her and get to know her and you guys can become a, a group of people who support each other on their endometriosis journey. You guys have a good day. Bye.